Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. Today we'll be going over the process to enable a new and unique security and safety feature for ProSoft Connect Cloud Service, Virtual Lockout Tagout, or VLOTO for short. This system allows OEMs, system integrators, and machine builders the easy remote access they need to troubleshoot and monitor equipment anywhere at any time while also giving end users total granular control over who has remote access to their industrial equipment and for how long. ProSoft Connect also keeps a detailed record of who is requesting access to a particular gateway and who approves or denies the request, as well as any other actions taken on the gateway. We'll go through the process to enable VLOTO on a gateway, set up the contacts who will be responsible for granting remote access to the gateway and its associated equipment, and we'll finally go through a scenario where a support person is requesting access, and we'll deal with that. We'll be doing all of this using the ProSoft Connect Remote Access Cloud Service. The gateway we use could be an ICX35 cellular modem or an NB2 wired network bridge. We have other videos that go over the configuration process for each of these. For my example, I have an NB2 that is connected to some equipment in a material handling application. The equipment has suffered some sort of problem and I need the OEM support guy for that machine to remote in and determine what is happening. Let's begin. We start by enabling VLOTO on the gateway for which remote access will be requested. To do this, I'll log into ProSoft Connect, and on the main window where I can see all the gateways associated with my account, I'll select the appropriate gateway, go to its access tab, go down to the VLOTO dynamic authorization, and here all we have to do is use the drop down menu to set it to enabled. Now note that you'll need to have a power user plan for your Connect account in order to use the VLOTO feature, and you'll have to be a project administrator or have configuration privileges in order to enable it. When we do this, we're prompted to enter in the email addresses of the individuals who will be responsible for granting or denying access to this gateway. You'll need at least one email address, and you currently can list up to three and you can enter group email addresses if you like. It's not necessary for these individuals to have a Connect account. When someone requests access to the gateway, an email will go out to each address in the list with an option to deny or approve the connection. Now there's also a checkbox to require that the person log in to Connect in order to grant or deny access. This is a heightened security feature that requires them to have a Connect account and to use two-factor authentication in order to log in. I'll enter myself in the list along with another team member in my organization who works directly with the equipment that this gateway is connected to, as well as a network admin who does not have a Connect account but can still approve or deny access through the request email. Only one person on the list needs to allow access in order for it to be given. But if anyone rejects the request, it will overrule any approvals that have already been given. And once this is done, we'll click the Apply button in the upper right corner of the page to apply the changes. VLOTO is now enabled on this gateway. If the OEM support person has not already been added as a team member in Connect, just go to the team members page, create an invite with his name and email, when they get the invitation, they'll be prompted to log into Connect or create a ProSoft Connect account if they haven't already. When they do that, this gateway will show up in their gateway view. And now, if they want to connect to it, you can see there is a Request Access button. Clicking this will bring up a window showing the individuals who will handle the request. There is a box to enter the duration of the requested connection. This can be one hour up to hundreds of hours if need be. And there's also a field to enter a reason for the access request. Each person on the list will receive an email at the listed address with a subject line of ProSoft Connect tunnel request for the specific gateway. 
In my email account, I'll open up the request email and I can see who is requesting access, for how long, and their explanation for the request. I'll click the Approve button. And this will take me to the Connect Login page where I'll log in. And then I am at the Approval page where I have all the information about this transaction. The user from this organization has requested access to this gateway for two hours and I have officially granted them access. Back in the OEM's account page, the button on the gateway icon has changed from Request Access to Connect with an Open Padlock icon, telling us that this is a vLotto-enabled connection. They can click on this, which will take them through the typical remote connection process, generating a one-time user password for the session. They would then just copy this to Clipboard and use it to generate the actual connection. Open the VPN connections, paste in the one-time password, and click Connect. Once the connection is made, the OEM will be able to access any automation equipment on the network with the gateway. They can access devices directly or use any configuration software they need to address the problem. And it will all behave exactly as if all this remote equipment is plugged directly into their local switch. The request was for a duration of two hours, and during that two-hour window, the OEM will be able to open and close tunnels to the gateway as many times as they like. But after two hours, the connection will automatically close and their access will be switched off. In order to reconnect, a new request will have to be made. At any point during the window of time in which they have access, it's possible for anyone on the request list to go back to their email and deny access to the gateway, even if they had previously approved it. I'll do that now, and it takes me to a screen similar to the approval screen with all the information about the request, and there's a field to enter an explanation for denying the connection. Click Deny, and we get a confirmation screen that access has been denied. This will immediately close the connection. Back on the OEM screen, we can see that the connection is already closed and cannot be reopened. On the gateway profile, it now says access denied. Clicking on this will bring up a window with the explanation of the denial. One last thing to note, at the top of the page, clicking on the Activity button brings up the Activity Log, and we can view a feed of all the actions taken by the various users involved in this whole process. That's it for this training session. If you found it helpful, please give it a like. And for more training and educational videos on industrial protocols and equipment, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or would like more information, feel free to visit our website or give us a call. Until next time, happy training.